Hi guys and welcome to the, the next video and um, just before I get on with uh, sewing some machining and some jobs that we've uh, got going on I just wanted to set the record straight on one of the um, previous videos the the Formula Ford video that we did recently but what's happened with it is the original engine builder has let me just put this camera down here sorry guys the original the original engine builder has watched the video and commented on it now i didn't know the original engine builder um when my customer dropped it off i didn't know who it was he didn't tell me who it was the engine come in because it had lack of power or it was just down on power straight away we spotted that um the rotor arm was had too much of a gap from the end of the rotor arm to inside the distributor cap but my customer wanted me to carry on with the build what he did say is he wanted me to have a look through it because i'm a lot closer um, so he can work with me in trying to develop the engine and, and the actual guy that built the engine in it does most of them and um, his workload is pretty massive so anyway in doing the engine we spotted that the flywheel was out of balance now on my balancer it showed that the crank was out of balance not as a complete mass, as a complete mass, I don't know if you remember watching the video, if you've watched the video that is, um, the complete mass was in balance, but end to end it was slightly out. Now, when I bought my balancer, we run it a little bit faster than some of the other guys balance at, and we changed the settings to make it more accurate. So although it was showing out of balance, it was probably still well within balance for most good race engines. It's just we wanted to be a little bit different and a little bit try and be a little bit more accurate. When we put the flywheel on, the flywheel was actually quite a lot out of balance. Now, obviously I've shown it on the video and it's upset the original engine builder. And what I wanted to point out is, I mean I don't know for definite because my customers have told me, but that flywheel might not have been balanced by the original engine builder. His flywheel, when it was balanced as a complete mass, could have been well within balance. Um, but the engine come to me with a flywheel on it. So I'm, I need to point out that that flywheel might not have been what Neil, the, the other engine builder, um, fitted to the engine. And I think it's only fair I point that out. Now, I also want to point out that I will never ever put anybody else's work down and my opinion and other people's opinion could be different. It's good to have different opinions and I'm not saying that the way I do things is right but I do things my way um, and a lot of the time there's a lot of trial and error, we play around with things, sometimes things break, we fix them and we move on. Not very often but that's how we develop, that's how we develop engines to race with engines. And like I say, there was nothing wrong with that engine. When I stripped that engine, I actually commented on how good the engine was built, how neat it was, everything was within tolerance. It's a very good engine. So if any of Neil's customers are watching my video, first of all, thank you for, for watching and hopefully subscribing. But do not worry about that work because the man knows how to build engines. And we've had a, a, a conversation the other day on the phone and we were talking for about an hour and 15 minutes and we got on really really well and I told him that I would put this out there just to um, just to clarify it really uh, I'm not deleting the video because I stand by my work and I stand by what I say and what I thought and the things that I've done to it I personally think will help it but that that engine was a good engine and, and that's, I just wanted to clear that off my chest. And I just thought I would say that I've been building engines since I was 14 when I, when I, when I built my first engine and it was for a national mini stock. Um, my stepdad Bob and um, my mum bought me a mini stock when I was 14 and in the, in the first race I blew it up and we couldn't afford to fix it or pay to get it fixed. So 
we fixed it ourselves. And from that day forward, engines have been my life really. Um, when I get in at night, I look up engine videos, I read engine books. It's all I'm interested in. And it's a huge passion of mine and I've been very, very lucky to work with some absolute great people. My first job was at a company called Midland Engine Services, which is in Shepshed, where I worked with a guy called Mank Riley, who um, started me off really. Um, I, I was the apprentice for a guy called Paul Exon, who I've been friends with for a long time. He's another engine builder now. Um, and then I moved down to be with what's now my wife Tracy and worked at a Sally with Bob Tyler, uh, Rob, the, the couple of guys there called Robin, and they all have a passion for engines. Now, I started off by myself uh, 20 years ago when I left the Sally, and I left the Sally to go and work for Snap on Tools. And at the same time, I took a couple of the Sally customers with me doing crossflow engines for the low cost series. And um, a good, like one of my best friends now, uh, Paul Tompkins, he um, gave me a workshop to work out of. So he kind of got me going in my own business. At the start, we was working out of a shed at the side of our house. Well, it wasn't even a shed actually, it was a fence. And we put two ends on it and a, and a roof. And um, all I did then was gas blow cylinder heads and build a couple of engines. And um, so Paul Tompkins actually got me going. Um, we outgrew that unit, moved to another unit, and then moved to uh, the unit that we do most of the filming in. And now we've bought this unit. Um, I'm happy to teach people. I want people to have knowledge. I don't try and hide anything. Um, Sam will take this over eventually. He's been coming to work with me since he was five years old. And the passion's there for him as well, he loves it. I mean, he's over, the, it's nine, half past nine at night now, and he's over the other side, honing a block to get it in the cleaner. Um, so, what I try and teach has come from passion, not like, oh, I've got to go to work tomorrow, because there's other things I can do that would earn me more money, if I'm being completely honest. Um, my other passion is snap on tools and, and I would become a richer man just concentrating and putting everything into that than I would try to do engines as well or running the engine business as well. I mean, we are a professional engine shop. I reinvest virtually every penny that we've got in equipment and the unit and more equipment and making things look nice. And I don't want to hide anything from any of you guys. If you want to know how I fix it, I'll tell you how I fix it. I will try and answer the questions. If you want to know a paint colour, I'll tell you it. If you want to know how I finish a, a cylinder ball, get a broken stud out, balance, I will tell you anything. I'm not trying to hide anything because I do think this is a, a rapidly a dying trade and I don't want it to be. It's fantastic. I've enjoyed every minute of engine building and racing cars and meeting people through this trade. and. And I also feel like now I've got another friend in um, in Neil who, who, I, who I've made this video about really. So anyway, that's that's it really. That, that's all I just wanted to get off my chest. Um, this is Reese's engine from the pickup truck. So this got um, stripped up at Sunny's a few weeks ago uh, and it all fell perfectly within the rules and regulations. So this is what Reese used for halfway through the season to win the championship with. So this has all now been washed and it's all back together. Um, I've just got to do a couple of checks to it, uh, bolt the rocker cover on, and we're making a new uh, dry sump pump bracket because that um, that's fractured. So we're going to we're beefing that up a little bit because we don't need any issues with that. Um, so that's this engine. So. Um, for listening I'm sorry if it was a little bit boring but I just wanted to clarify um, the crossflow engine and like I say it was a good engine so we'll get on with some work uh, if you could all subscribe that'd be great and uh, yeah we'll see you at the end of this video cheers